Hello and welcome to this edition of Diaspora Central. With me today, I have a man that needs no introduction to Texas, no introduction to the US, no introduction to the Afro Caribbean, Afro Cuban community. The man goes by the name Kosher. He's so kosher. That could only be Calvin. Calvin Kosher. <laughs> What's going on, brother? Welcome to Diaspora Central, brother. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for having me. Man, 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 man. Finally, we made it, huh? Yeah. 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 We, 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 have, we have been attempting to get this thing going for quite a while. Pretty much. Indeed. But you know we're here, bro. Yeah. No, yeah. definitely, man. But you you know you know what? I'll tell you what, dude. You are one of the individuals that has definitely impressed me in Houston, Texas. Thank you. And I, I will start this way. Diaspora Central is a platform that really has as its primary purpose nothing else but showcase diaspora culture and talent. And brother, I believe that you are one of those pillars that needs to be showcased. I appreciate that. Yes, sir. An entrepreneur. <laughs> A publicist, right? You guys, you also have a magazine, yeah, yeah. right? And now you have a uh, wine, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and today, and today, I think we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna talk about all those things, man. We gotta figure out exactly who Calvin Culture here is. We're gonna have to figure out who exactly has inspired this young man to become who has who he has become because I see a lot of things about you on social media and some of the things that definitely impressed me, brother, is that you also pledged. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's go ahead and get this show started. Let's do it. Diaspora, stand up because Afro-Cuban kosher <laughs> is now in the building. <laughs> Calvin. <laughs> Talk to me, bro. Yeah. Let's talk about your heritage, man. Let's establish okay. this heritage. Let's yeah, talk man. a little bit about the Cuban portion of you. Wow, you've been paying attention. Yes, sir. Always, man. We have to. Yeah, thank you, man. Mm -hmm. I, I, I've been hearing my uh, grandmother say a lot, you know, yeah. about the Cuban part of us. Mm -hmm. And I don't know much about that, but, you know, for the past year, mm -hmm. I've been really wanting to be around my grandparents a lot because mm -hmm. you learn so much about who you are right. regarding your ancestors, right. you know. And I recently just learned that one of my ancestors, one of my great granddads, okay. um, right here in Houston, Texas, yeah. um, he's not from Houston, Texas, he's from Havana, Cuba. Okay. Uh, wow. Yeah, he was one of the first uh, African American postal workers here in Houston. And what you hmm. saw on Instagram were, were, were all of the postal workers that was yes, you sir. Know, in his group. Yes, sir. First black. And you noticed that he was he was a white Cuban. Yes. But what I learned is that he identified as as a black man instead. I mean, that was right. more important to him. Right. And he was killed on the railroad tracks for loving a black woman, for being married to a black woman. Wow. Because, you know, he doesn't he doesn't have the resemblance of a black man. Right. So, so he could uh, pass, but the fact that he was married to a woman that was actually darker than him. Yeah. That, yeah, and that yeah. woman, suppose, according to my grandmother, mm -hmm. she, she owned the first uh, black flower shop here. You know, I can't say that it's verified, right. but, you know, I have no reason not to believe but, it. I just think it's cool. Right, so we can say at least one of the first. Yeah. Yeah, one yeah. of the first. And, and now, Diaspora Central, you do have a first right here. Hey man, I appreciate that. First them. first postal office worker. Yeah. With African and Cuban origin in the US. That's or it. right here in Texas. Right here. Wow. That's a first. Man. So where does all that drive come from, man? You stay busy. I, you know, I, I never can give the credit to myself. Mm -hmm. Uh there's a lot of important people in my life right. forever. Mm -hmm. um, I've always been held to a high standard right. and there's never a moment in my life where I felt like I didn't have people that believed in me, yeah. you know? So, uh, shout out to my great grandmothers for sure. Mm -hmm. Um, 
I want to say shout out to my pops. Yeah. You know. You can my, you can give us names, man. This is Dashboard yeah. Central. We want we want to record that. Okay. Yeah, yeah. we want to record those names. This is my great grandmother. Right here, brother. My, yeah. my great grandmother went on a gray. Mm -hmm. Now Fitzgerald. Um yeah, I want to give a huge shout out to her. Yeah. I want to give a huge shout out to my grandmother, Rhonda Fitzgerald, my mom. Yeah. Uh the whole Fitzgerald family. Um, because they really instilled within me a lot of the um the values. Right. And the style, and I mean, my singing. Yeah. The women in my family are singers. Right. It's not okay. the men. So, the, so, so you, you, you. That, that's what got mm. you used to the mic, to the can, right? Like they would say back in the days. That what got you used to the can. Yeah, man. Back, man. Back in the days, I, I remember when I was a kid. My mom, she really put us on all the music. She had this big, right. um, this big CD case mm -hmm. full of the classic soul ballads and. Right everything to the f actions mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying right here in houston texas she had all of the music it wasn't my right. grandparents that put me on the music wow. now my grandparents they were more into the, the church life and everything like that so that's got where you. i got that so that, that, that's what gave you that soul that 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 that, that yeah. dude because you solid man you solid appreciate it you bro. solid as a singer you are definitely solid and I, i'll tell you right now not even to jump forward but i slept a little bit on um rodeo <laughs> Dude, <laughs> I slept a little bit on rodeo until last year when you released um, that um, social conscious record. Man, what was the title of it? The the one that you did for what was going for for the the Afrobeat. The, yeah, for what was going. And I was yeah. like, wait a second. I came across um, and I remember hearing that record uh, before, but it kind of went so fast that i honestly dude when i reheard that record i was like this is huge <laughs> that record is big man that's a big record there thank you man. yeah uh, and that's one of one of the things that i kind of want to touch on who who, okay. who produced it um who, who worked on it with you yeah on, so mm -hmm. uh i'm one of those guys that i, I would troll youtube for beats right because I haven't started making beats on my own. There yet. you go. But I, I I appreciate other people's art. Right. Just as much as I appreciate my own. Mm -hmm. So I heard that that beat that this guy named OVA, the creator, he made. Okay. And immediately I knew I was going to write to it. Well, give it about a year. Recently, mm -hmm. once the, the uh, Ahmaud Arbery and the George Floyd mm -hmm. situation happened, mm -hmm. I was like, it's the perfect time. Like, I got to release this record. Right. And I did that. And I, I, you know, I put it on the album right. that I just released called Pressure. But it hit home for me, man, because yeah. I would listen to that record over and over and over and over again. Right. Even before I recorded it. Mm -hmm. When I recorded, I recorded it exactly how it sounded in my head. All those times when I would just run the music back. So that was pure. That was that was, was there was that pure, feeling bro. right at the yeah. moment. Yeah, yeah. like yeah. I sat in my car and just cried. Yeah. Like, just listening to the record. Yeah. Just thinking about the 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 lives that it can touch, man. It's and it's not even just about right. black people right. or whatever. Oh no, no. That's and I a, never that's made a mention of race in the, right. in the record. Yeah, yeah, no, so. no. Socially socially, dude, that's a deep record, man. That's Thank a deep record and definitely, definitely. <laughs> makes the difference between you and a lot of other artists. Uh, we don't we don't want to start no beefs or, <laughs> or anything. We just stating facts, yeah, right? Okay, we just stating it. facts, right? We just stating facts and appreciating art because I mean, from a social conscious perspective, that is definitely a, a deep record. Now, my favorite out of yours, uh, uh, the one that is like, dude, I, I even have on my playlist is um, Rodeo. Rodeo, yeah, produced right by DJ Cho. Yeah. Yeah, that, that 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 record. But let's take let's take a quick break because I want to take our first break. But before we go into our first break, I, I kind of want to hit in a couple of things very briefly. Um, what school did you go to? So I graduated from Prairie View A and M University. Okay. Uh, the high school I went to is called the Houston Academy for International Studies. Okay. I went and, to Hamilton Middle School. In, yeah. Uh, James D. Burris Elementary. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. James D. Burris Elementary. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a elementary school in my neighborhood. Okay. Independent Sites. It's the first black municipality in the state of Texas. 
So first black city for those who n- don't know. What, n- 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 now I can n- n- now I can see why you're so solid, man. Oh man. Yeah. yeah. No, no, you can't you can't rock a solid foundation and trust you and me that now I see why you're solid. Dude, because I'm telling you right now, that energy is there. It's there. It's like it's Appreciate straight it. there, man. On 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 the way you carry yourself, on the way you handle business, on the way you are. And that's definitely great. But let's go into this quick break and uh let's take a look at um one one of your videos. I'll I'll let you pick the first one that you want to show. Let's do rodeo. That's rodeo. Yeah, rodeo. that's that, that's that, that's but that's my track right there. That's on my <laughs> playlist, man. <laughs> All right, so let's go into rodeo right here on Diaspora Central with Gil Inglés. And my guest today, Mr. Kosh. Baby girl, what's in your cup? You having too much fun. You wanna know what I'm sipping on? Cause you want some. So baby, what are you doing? Baby, what are you doing? I'm trying to leave with you. Girl, I'm from the zoo. Yo, baby. Don't be shy. Ride me like it's the rodeo, the rodeo, the rodeo. Girl, like it's the rodeo. just joined us you are now tuned to diaspora central with gil inglés and my guest today mr calvin coach uh, is in the building calvin shalom <laughs> the most solid cat in houston texas and this is not a plug this is not this is just a fact if you do not know coach and that's K-O-S-H-A. You need to know this man because definitely if you are in the Gulf region, you need to know this man. If you are in the U.S. continental, you need to know this man. <laughs> you need to know this man because this brother is definitely doing big things. Now, what inspired you to start um, to, to get into the entertainment industry initially? Yeah, Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson. Yeah, when I was a kid, mm-hmm. I just... He had this enigmatic presence, and I was just like, "Like, who is this dude?" Right. You know, uh, yeah, Michael Jackson. But I grew up singing, uh, of course, in church. Mm-hmm. And when I was in school, um, even before elementary, when I was in private school, yeah, uh, I would like lead the the choirs and stuff like gotcha. that. So I used to want to be in the NBA. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, you get to high school, you realize, right. yeah, that ain't gonna work. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. So. <laughs> you you five you five five um. I'm I'm by five between five seven five eight five seven five eight. You okay, know. so you five eight. Yeah, yeah. So man, you know, but well, that's I mean, Michael Jackson, my greatest inspiration right. as it comes to music and entertainment. Mm-hmm. So and there's so many other greats that you can call Sam Cooke. Right. I mean, I was I was singing that kind of music in elementary school. I remember the the mailman yeah um, in, in my neighborhood right i mean i was just in love with his daughter oh dude. elementary school <laughs> it's gotta be it's gotta be a woman in there somewhere go on oh, uh, yeah <laughs> and i would and i remember i would sing luther vandross the superstar until you until you Ooh. come back to me i would sing that for the mailman right he, he knew i had a thing for his daughter wow and yeah man so <laughs> i done been so dude i just wow did you did you eventually did did you and her eventually get together uh 
No, nah, man. No, elementary not school. Materialized. E- elementary school. You, you didn't slip that note. You didn't slip that note. Um, Want to be your boyfriend? Oh, check no, no, yes, no. No, that was clear. Oh, elementary that was clear. school is a different yeah. story. Yeah. yeah. I, th- I thought you meant like. No, no. Like, I mean, right right there, the, we're talking that puppy love. E- e- eventually, yeah. Yeah. She yeah. knew she knew oh, yeah. that um kosher was her kosher. Well, I was Calvin. <laughs> Calvin. I was Calvin. Yeah. Then. You were she, Calvin. She was always an incredible girl. Yeah. Know, she, even to this day. You 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 can so. you can shout out the name if you want to cuz um yeah, man, her name is Taylor. Part. Taylor. Yeah, <laughs> Taylor. She she's an incredible girl. I mean, she went to school up in yeah. uh Maine, Brown University. Yeah. I don't know exactly what she's doing in her life right now, but what? whatever it is, it's great. Yeah. Yeah. No. I just think about that because, you know, a lot of people, when they think about their ex-girlfriends and right. stuff like that, they probably right. got something bad to say. But, right. you know, I can count on my hand the amount of girlfriends that I've had. Right. And they all done incredible things yeah, in their life. And, and that, you know what? Normally, greatness attracts greatness. I that's the reason why. Yeah, that's definitely the reason why. Greatness attracts greatness. So, um, and, and it doesn't have to be too many of them. Sometimes the least, probably the better, because the le- the level of energy is just definitely different. Yeah. And um, what was your first um thing? Was it? I mean, was it? I know that as an entrepreneur, you have a magazine. Now you mm-hmm. have a, a wine line. Uh, yeah. And you, of mm-hmm. course, you are known primarily as an artist. Um, was music your first love, or was it business? Of course, you just mentioned that you also wanted to be an NBA. Um, yeah. Star. So in high school, what exactly happened to change that? Yeah. So, well, it was really before high school. Okay. So in elementary school, mm-hmm. there was this lady named Miss Tracy. Okay. She came in as a dance teacher, and of course, I was already a performer. Right. I had this this brother named Bracy Love Lady, mm-hmm. who led you know had the boys choir. I was right. really too young to be in the choir, but I led it anyway. Yeah. And. Leading from there, I mean, I, we eventually would do these shows where um, I, I first played Ray Charles. Okay. Um, like these Broadway type shows. Like right. I, mentioned, I did Ray Charles and then I did Michael Jackson. I remember my grandmother would, would sew my um, my outfits for me. Yeah. So I carried that <laughs> over. And I used to do the dance. I used to dance like Mike and all yeah. that. Like that was just my thing. That, that, I, that was you. I carried it over to middle school yeah. where I just continued doing um, – doing these talent shows and stuff like that people mm-hmm. knew me as a as a singer and leading into high school um you know i right. just kept i just kept up with the music right. recorded my first song in the 10th grade with my cousin uh jeremiah dj bozo it's what right. he goes by but you know yeah if you want to know dude i just all my life i've i've been performing right like, it was just a thing i just wanted to I wanted to be in that light. You, you wanted to be on in some kind of stage, but you definitely had to be in stage. Yeah, I wanted to be like star. Michael Jackson and Michael Jordan. You're a star, man. You're a star. You're a star. You're a, star. star. a star is born is born a star. It doesn't matter what happens in the process. Eventually, will shine. Thank you, man. Yeah, I, like to shine, shine. I like to shine light on other yeah. people. I, mm-hmm. You know, I I feel like if you're a star, yeah. You know, you're, you're gonna have to shine light on Indeed. something. Indeed, it's, it's got it's got to, brother. And you def you definitely doing that because you. I mean, you also now creating um, opportunities for others. Of course, you have your 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 wine line, Kosher. Let's talk a little. Actually, before we talk about the Kosher, magazine. Uh, yeah, let's talk about the magazine. Yeah. So when I graduated from Prairie View mm-hmm. um, with a degree in communications, minor in marketing. Right. Um, so my frat brother, my mentor. Yeah. My big brother. There you um, go. Anthony Patton, W. Anthony Patton. Mm-hmm. He's always had an agency, the Duop Agency. Gotcha. It's a marketing communications firm. Okay. And that that firm, um, he was responsible in New Orleans after Katrina. Mm-hmm. Um, he got the government uh, funding and contracting to help rebuild the city. Same thing with Jersey after right. Sandy. Right. So he eventually came to Houston and he wanted to pick my brain and see what I was up to. Okay. Um, since, you know, he wrote one of my letters of recommendation yeah. for me to be yeah. a member of Cap Alpha Psi Fraternity Incorporated. Okay. So he is my frat brother as well. Right. So, um, I eventually started doing gigs for him, you know, okay, with his agency mm-hmm. and it, it later turned into full time to where, I'm not the director and project manager of just about everything that we do. So there you go. he always had this magazine called right. Social Lifestyles mm-hmm. and Events uh, yeah. magazine. And 
we rebranded it. Right. And now it's the Slim Magazine. And not only are we doing that, we're we're focused on this big project right now called the Minority Report. Okay. Um, that was really successful in New Orleans. Right. Um, when he when he had it out there, because there was just a it. need to make sure, right. you know, we knew what was going on with mm-hmm. our people. Right. So now we've rolled that project out here. We just wrapped up a hundred plus uh, interviews mm-hmm. of black mm-hmm. owned businesses and entrepreneurs. Right. And we're launching the project through this whole February, a month of February, Black History Month. Right. Um, we're gonna have the award show gala at the Buffalo Soldiers Museum on the twenty okay. eighth. All last right. Day. The last day. All right, definitely. This, uh, month, no, man, so. definitely, man. And one, yeah. one more reason why it is important to, um, to how can I say to, to feel the representation of us in specific places because it always, it always takes uh, one to kind of break through, right? That big brother yeah. came through and kind of helped you and mm-hmm. put a team around you, a positive team around you, and today you are now putting positive teams around other people around you. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. but let, but let's go into another break because um we got we got to check out uh, <laughs> some of your good videos, man. So let's go ahead and um give us the second video that you wanna want us to take a look at. I tell you what, um this is this is record I did mm-hmm. called Black Magic. Okay, and it features Jazz Anderson. Mm-hmm. Um, if y'all don't know who Jazz Anderson is, she's an incredible artist, right? Incredible person. Her mom is Tammy Roman. A lot of people get a kick out of that. Yeah, but Jazz is just Jazz. <laughs> um, so she's in a reality TV. Right. She was on the show Signed yeah. by Rick Ross. Right. Um, she's been in the BT cipher. Like I'm just really proud of her, just like I am. With all my other friends, DJ Chosey, right. Megan Thee Stallion, right. whom I went to school with. Right. Um, yeah, Black Magic featuring Jazz Anderson. So, All right, so let's go down. into Black Magic with Calvin Culture right here on Diaspora Central. You spend right your day dancing in the pot of gold. You know, darling, don't you run. You're the best thing rising, you're the morning sun. Cleopatra couldn't fetch you, Medusa couldn't catch you. So happy, you're the one I want. Oh, hey. How did you do this to me? I can't believe it. Ra 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 And today, my mega star friend and guest, right here on the Astro Central, Calvin Kosha. Calvin. Yes, <laughs> Woo. Pledged business owner. Huh? Well rooted into the church. Solid singing. And now a wine <laughs> brand comes out man and yeah. not just a wine brand brother i'm gonna tell you right now listen when you walk into a store and you see your name in a bottle 
That's big, man. <laughs> that's Appreciate big. That. That's big. Appreciate that. Definitely man. big. And um, I'm, I'm gonna tell you right now. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna get some bottles and I'm gonna get them all signed. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna get some bottles and I'm gonna get them all signed, brother. So Say let's less. talk. Yeah, let's talk a little bit about kosher. Okay. Yeah. How did that idea come up? Who it's, came uh, up with? So it, you mean kosher the wine? The, the wine. Okay. Yeah. yeah. The wine. So. Um, when, when when this COVID pandemic really started to take effect, mm-hmm. a lot of people are trying to figure out ways to you know keep their business mm-hmm. running and you know in in, in the light. Mm-hmm. And a good friend of mine, Jaslyn Simmons, she reached out to me like, "Hey, there's somebody looking for brand ambassadors." The lady's name is Miss Hope Foster. Mm-hmm. She's the owner of Signature Sips. It's a black-owned beverage company. Okay. She crafts beverages, alcoholic and non-alcoholic. Okay. And I became one of her brand ambassadors for the Stop Whining Mojito that she has. Gotcha. Uh, did that for, for some months. Yeah. And eventually, around the time of my birthday, which was in December, yeah. that month, she was like, it's time for you to have your own. Right. And I always thought you know, one day I have my own right. liquor or something like that, but it wasn't an idea um, that I was just trying to press upon. But right. but Yahweh made it clear. Um, if anybody's uh, uh, reads the Bible and stuff like that, he said, I know the plans that I have for you. Yep. And I constantly have to tell myself that because we think that we got it all worked out on yeah. our dreams and yep. what we want to do. Yeah. But there's a tide in the affairs of men which taking at the flood lease on the fortune. Indeed. Okay. And when that comes in, it's either you're going to jump on it, you're going to jump on that wave, or you're not. Right. And for me, it was it was somebody wanting to do something, wanting to bless me with something. Mm-hmm. So I took it. Yeah. I was like, let's do it. And I mean, people just, just get a kick out of, out of this honey water. Right. Moscato, you know. <laughs> and honey, I mean, honey water is my favorite thing to drink. Mm-hmm. I just like hot mm-hmm. water and honey. Gotcha. It's just... Got you. So yeah. no, no, it's um, it, and it's doing pretty well. I see, I see a lot going on on social media, and I'll tell you right now, I'm gonna have to get my bottles, and of course, I gotta get them signed. I, I don't, I couldn't get them and <laughs> just get them. No, I gotta get them, then get them signed because that's what that's what we do and how we do it. I now, you, let's go back into actually the origin of Kosha the brand okay. or the name. Yeah, yeah. So let's digress a little bit. So people who know me know me. They know me as Cali Cal. Okay. That was my name. That is my name. <laughs> but uh, that was my name and yeah. my artist name for a while. Yeah. I, when I released my first project, Good Company, um, it was an EP. Okay. Man, I, I, I eventually tried to get on Pandora. And when okay. they put it on Pandora, they put it under somebody else's name was Cali Whoa. Cal. And at that point, I was just fed up. I was like, right. I'm done, bro. It's too many people with the same name. With the same name, want to be <laughs> Cali Cal. And I got, I mean, even my line brother, right. call him Cali Cal. And we have the same first name. Right. He's number 10 and I'm number 11. I well, love yeah. my brother, by the way. There you go. Right. Um, but yeah, like, I was like, nah, I'm, I'm done with this. So I'm thinking a different name changes. Mm-hmm. I call my boy Chose. I'm like, bro, I'm thinking about changing my name. What, what do you think it could be? This and that. And. Right. And I remembered, I thought uh, I was riding the car one day and I thought of this word kosher. Mm-hmm. And it was before, it, this is before right. I was deciding to change my name. Right. Um, and kosher, it, it means legit. Right. I mean, it's, it's also like right. something that's, that's you know, according to the Jewish standards yeah. and what have you. Mm-hmm. So when I was ready to change my name, I was right. like, kosher. Yeah. Kosher. So I dropped the ER, added the A. A is the first yeah. letter of the alphabet, and since kosher already has a, a, a denotation right. of meaning, you know, being legitimate right. and official, right. um, I said to myself, "That's what we need to be doing. We need to um, we need to learn to be true to ourselves, right. be real with who we are, yeah, authentic. You know, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, kosher. That's that's one of the meanings for kosher. Hey, hey, you know? listen. I think you you hit that nail on the head because, dude." I don't think anybody else could have been that. I can tell you right now. I don't think anyone else could have been that because definitely based on the things that you are doing, based on the background that you have, and based on the things that God is planned for you, brother, you're definitely representing not only yourself, but a whole generation of individuals in the diaspora. Because a lot of times we think that, hey, 
you know what, it's just me. Yeah. Right. And we forget that we're inspiring a lot of other people behind us. And I'll be honest with you, I am one of the individuals that you to inspire, man, because I see you do things and I'm like, you know what, we got to do, we definitely got to do something because I'm from DC. I got to Houston, Texas, and I was kind of like just trying to figure out even, you know, who, who to kind of watch out for who mm -hmm. to kind of link connect with and whatever and and a lot of times it's like it's almost like starting over right and ran into you after that i just kind of started following you and it was like dude i'm like yo this is yeah. this is yeah this is real right there this is this is real and and when you see and i, I mean not to prop myself but real recognize is real and i say that because i did 25 years in the entertainment industry a lot of folks don't know that. <laughs> <laughs> and you still look the same. Brother, I still look the same. Yeah. I, I appreciate that, man. Thank I, you, sir. I, when you say that I've inspired you, yeah. I really appreciate that. And that, that inspires Definitely. me yeah. and motivates me to keep going. Yeah. My life mission um, since high school, when we had to learn the right mission statements. Right. Uh, well, I in high school, I attended uh, HCC as well. Okay. This is an early college high right. school. Yeah. And... There was this one class, it was my music business class. Mm -hmm. One of our uh, assignments was to come, you know, create a mission statement. Right. So my mission statement has always been to inspire, motivate, and impact the lives of the world through music and entertainment, community service, right. um, and never-ending life achievement. So, you know, even this show, you know, right. when you're saying that I'm going to inspire the world and everything like that, Definitely. I, I wonder every day, Yeah. what's another way I can do that? Yeah. So. Well, now you're doing it, man. You de you definitely, you're definitely doing it. And that and that's part of the reason why Diaspora Central could not do its first season without highlighting you, because I'm telling you right now, um, I believe that every region has pillars. And you are definitely one of the pillars of the Gulf region. Thank you, man. Where are yes, you sir. from? I'm originally from Angola. But I grew up in Washington, D.C., 35 years in the Washington, D.C. area. Wow. Yes, sir. Yeah, but I, I was born in Angola, Southwest Africa. Okay. Yeah. yeah I need to visit. Yeah. No, I, brother, I, I've already started that conversation. You, what, yeah. you speak other languages? I speak Portuguese. Portuguese. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, and um, if you don't know, Angola and Cuba, they have a very close, very, very, very tight, close history. That's okay. why when... On top of that, you dropped that Cuban thing. I was like, yeah, th this brother definitely needs to visit Angola. You need to visit Angola. You need to visit Angola to inspire our people, to really inspire our generation, to kind of show that, you know what? <clears throat> you can you can come out of any end and make yeah. it. I, I definitely want to do that, man. Yeah. I want to I wanna give a shout out to this brother named uh, Isaiah Washington. Mm -hmm. Uh, if you don't know him, he's he's an American actor. Yeah. Well, for a lot of people that doesn't watch this show called P Valley, right? Uh, he's one of the actors on there. Yeah. He's my cousin. Now I've never met him, mm -hmm. but I remember when I was in high school, uh, I reached out to him, right? Because I sit with my great grandmother, and she just tells me our history and mm -hmm. our family and stuff like that. And Isaiah Washington is one of our first cousins, right? So. I reached out to him, got to telling him who, who his folks were. And he like, dude, either you the FBI or you my cousin. <laughs> <laughs> so the reason I want to give a shout out to him is because he, he traced his roots yeah. back to Sierra Leone. Okay. And yeah. if I'm not mistaken, they made him either a chief, like a chief or something yeah. out there. So yeah. it's always been one of my dreams to become an African chief or right. a king. To, to, to kind of trace your roots back to where you yeah. are. Yeah, I want to I wanna know on, on every level, my, my grandmother, my mom's mom, right. her grandmother, Addie Calhoun, yeah. is full-blooded Cherokee. Mm -hmm. um, so I know the, the African, I know somewhere with my, my great-grandmother, you right. know, being connected to Isaiah Washington, the, the African heritage is, is strong there. Even right. her mother and grandmother, like, Someone was a slave at one point. I forgot right. what she said it was, right. but uh, West African. And then yeah. my dad side out. I, I just you know yeah. learned about the Cuban. And, right. You know. Yeah. yeah no, with that, with that, that, that. I mean, today that can definitely be done. But one of the things that I would, or I would 
already offered this out to you, dude. I'm, I'm offering you Angola as your home country because you definitely are a brother of mine and I will consider a brother of mine and I'll say it publicly right here. Okay. Anytime, anything you need, you holler, brother. If, if I can do it, I'll definitely make it happen. And this is not just talk. I'm being real, real talk. Yes, sir. But you, yeah, but let's take another let's take another quick break because you have another video for us and we gotta keep our audience dancing, man. <laughs> they love you. That's that's the re that's the reason why they follow you. They love they love your music. Aside mm -hmm. from the inspiration, they also love your music. So let's give them what they love. Yeah. So let's see. The next one I want to do. Uh, I want to give a shout out to my boy Marco, mm -hmm. who I went to school with. But right. um, we got this record called "I Want You." Okay. That's one of our videos. A lot of people who know us know that record. So we shot the music video. Shout out to Robin. That's in the video. Shout out to my girl uh, Sunny. Mm -hmm. That was one of the models in the video as well. Shout out to Oshachi Films who filmed it. That's right. my brother as well. So I want you, Marco and Coach. All right, right here on Diaspora Central with Gillian Lutz. just joined us you are now tuned in to diaspora central and our guest today is calvin kosh oh <laughs> it's a good day yes sir yes sir diaspora you better be standing up and because well you should be standing up anyway you just finished dancing <laughs> right yeah but um you are a man that has a sense of of how can i say of self-respect of community awareness of being driven being a provider um at what point in your life did that weight fall over your shoulders because you know there are people that you can look at and see like you know and see that hey you know what he he's carrying something well my great, my great great grandfather. Mm -hmm. what, what was his name? The late John Scott Grace Sr. Yeah. He was the oldest preceding judge in Texas before he passed. Mm -hmm. When I was a kid, I, I remember images of us together. Um, I would sit in his office, his home office, and I me, mean, man, we would crack pecans, eat bananas. And, I mean, I was like my best friend. Yeah, and I think uh, I think it was around 2006 when he passed, but. 
I didn't know how much of a giant he was to our community mm -hmm. and in the political atmosphere. Right. I mean, he was very well respected. And when people talk about him, I think like all 5,000 households in our neighborhood, right. they had to vote. Yeah. Like it was a big deal. Yeah. And I never was into politics mm -hmm. growing up, but I see how, how important it is today. Yeah. Like yeah. politics so, is everything. Social responsibility. Yeah. So yeah. for me, I real once I realized that life is bigger than me mm -hmm. being an artist, like, dude, if you're an artist out there, you you don't like please know that you can be replaced. Right. Like there's plenty of people doing music that right. can sing better than you, act, dance. Right. They can top you in that. Yeah. But what I said to myself is I wanna leave a legacy. Mm -hmm. And I don't know exactly how I'm gonna do that. Right. But he left a legacy. Mm -hmm. And for me, I felt like it would be it, it it wouldn't be a good thing for me not to take on some of that right some of that that mattered man right. so that's right. when the weight kind of started to really fall upon me mm -hmm. as I got a little bit older especially graduating high school and going mm -hmm. into college and then graduating college right. so um and then you know I have brothers uh all of us all four of us are different mm -hmm. we're all going about different walks of life right now but okay. we're still brothers and we're yeah. connected yeah G give give uh, give us names so, give us names and um yeah. a bit about them uh, so <laughs> all three of my brothers coming from my mom. Okay. Um, one of them is over in, in New York right now. He joined the army. Okay. He's married. Okay. Uh, he got a baby on the way. There you go. Congratulations. I'm excited about that. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, my other two brothers, mm -hmm. um, Xavier, Robert is in, in New York. New York. Okay. Xavier, he has a son, a little boy to death. He, uh, his 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 girl uh yeah is hispanic and okay black, so okay you know we talk okay about the, okay yeah man um yeah. and he's he's doing well and you know my my youngest brother he a knucklehead he going through some <laughs> some tough times but you know it's a process indeed, indeed. and and he has uh children as well mm -hmm. so i'm the only one who don't have children right okay. now yeah hallelujah it, well so. but, you, but you know you know that um the ladies also do they want to know and they will kill me if i don't ask the question because <laughs> they want to know is calvin available for them is he well willing to well I, i'll say i'm a single man right but my time is very valuable <laughs> and I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm available to my grind and my hustle right okay. I'm, I'm available to um learning more and more every day seeking right. Yahweh Elohim even through all this madness that we go through right. in this world right but um yeah man I'm 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 experiencing life and learning from every angle that I can mm -hmm. and that's where a lot of that pressure comes in as well right because um I have a family mm -hmm. that looks up to me right I've, I've had my brothers tell me stuff like you're like a father figure and I I, I didn't understand that right um my dad you know he's he's had a pretty rough time as well um mm -hmm. but he's around and he wants to be around and he loves us yeah a lot of pressure on me there to make sure that all of the things that that people said that i would do right. and that they expected me which are great things mm -hmm. i want to uphold those things right um for my mom i want to make sure that out of all she sacrificed and all she's done right at some point I get to give it all back there you go and more because yes. my people were just always nurturing people yeah. 10 times four and i learned bro like your people gonna take care of you right you know Indeed. what i'm saying Indeed. we ain't never had to want for nothing we ain't we ain't grow up having the the uh flashiest clothes and right. stuff my mom made sure we had shoes on our feet and everything right. like that mm -hmm. like we always had food to eat and i remember being in middle school when when the, uh, these fusions and, and Jordans and stuff was starting to become really popular, everybody right. was breaking their necks to get the new pad Jordans and this right. and that. Mm -hmm. We didn't really have that. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. So I just, I, I, I really want to, um, I want to be successful in everything I'm doing. And mm -hmm. there's a lot of pressure there for me to be to successful. Right. And, so yeah. whoever she is, when she comes in, she's got to be aware that there is that social responsibility and she's got to be willing to assume that role also because oh, yeah. when you besides number one, you got to be willing to be number one. Yeah, man. And, and, and you know, when we're talking about the ladies, mm -hmm. you know, I'll say I, I've often said uh, nobody's good enough for me and I'm not good enough for anybody. Right. 
And what I mean by that is, dude, I'm a lover. Right. I am a lover. I do believe in people falling in love and stuff right. like that, man. Mm -hmm. and, and I look at our society today. Right. Um, dude, I applaud anybody that's in a in a full blown relationship, happy right. together and right. wanting to experience life together because our our music cult, musical culture mm -hmm. um it doesn't really promote much of right. that. So that's shout out to culture. the artists that do promote that. And right. I try my best yep. in the majority of my of my music to promote love. Right. Even though I got some I got some songs it's a little ratchet, you well, know what I I'm mean, saying? You 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 a person, you you living? Yeah, man. I I like to God promote days. You know, I, I like to promote love because yeah. I mean, look at our rappers that's 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 getting shot and killed right. left or right. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, I hate that for any of those people and those families that have to experience that. But then right. I also, as the artist in me goes, what were they singing and rapping about? Yeah. Like what what were they attracting to them? And yeah. I try my hardest to be careful of what I put out. You know on the airwaves mm -hmm. and all that thinking you know just draws back into what i'm learning what i'm seeing experiencing so yeah. for hold on you know the record that you said right. is, can be worldwide like yeah. that that's i did that for a reason like right. i want to touch lives with that and now i'm talking about you know please don't shoot my brother down yeah. um royal blood run on the ground right like all of that matters don't right. shoot my mother down Indeed. you know what i'm saying Indeed. so it's a lot, brother, that, that goes yeah. into what I do. And I want to give a shout out to the to the giants like mm -hmm. Minister Farrakhan, Louis yeah. Farrakhan. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not a man of Islam, but right. we got to preserve brothers like that. Indeed. Give a shout out to Dr. Yeah. Umar Johnson. Right. Uh, I just saw a video last night where he was um, on a breakfast club explaining like um, the, the, the castration. What is it? The... Um, the financial castration oh, yeah. of, of the black male and right. like how our culture here, mm -hmm. like it doesn't, it doesn't value um, black love and stuff like that. Right. So it just put a lot of things into perspective for me. And I really think about that because there are people out there that really want to, to love. Indeed. Indeed. You know, don't know how, don't, right. don't have those, those examples, yeah. you know, so shout out to Barack Obama and, right. and uh, the first lady, Michelle, right. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's a, that was the president of the United States, right. a black man and a black woman right. leading the country. Indeed. You know what I'm saying? So, Indeed. you know, I, I try my hardest right. to make sure that I, I, I emphasize that yeah. in that my you represent works. Yeah, yeah. no, de definitely. And, and, and he, def he definitely shows um, one, one of the things that I think a lot of times artists or people with platforms, right? Let's just say influencers tend to miss is the fact that they at some at always at some point they forget that they actually have a social responsibility and try to make it all about them mm -hmm. instead of making it about legacy and the fact that you are one aware of legacy and you want to ensure that you not only continuing to path the legacy that was already passed on down to you, but also pass the same legacy on to the next one in a better platform. It's definitely a good thing. Now, on the little small tat ta talk, mm -hmm. um, brief stuff, you currently have an album out. Yeah. What's Pressure. the name of the album? Pressure. Pressure. Um, talk mm -hmm. a little bit about that. Who, who worked on it with you? Some yeah, of man. the highlights. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man. So, um, a shout out to W. Anthony Patton again. He mm -hmm. he loves my music. He's right. a huge fan of mine. And okay. He was like, "Bro, it's time for me to get behind what you're doing. Right. I want to learn this industry. So we're gonna we're gonna take on this storm together, and, and right. we're gonna make some stuff happen. So we started uh, Doo Wop Records mm -hmm. and released my album under under Doo his label. Okay, so, so Doo Wop Records started. is the label. Doo Wop Records is the label yeah. that this album got released under sweet um shout out to my producers and engineers mm -hmm. um bambino ent yeah that brother's incredible mm -hmm. shout out to sean over at circle music group he's yeah. incredible he um uh, he engineered rodeo right and uh i need a dime and and several others mm -hmm. so yeah man shout out to my frat brother jet shout out to my brother from uh my neighborhood i sega beats mm -hmm. um 
and there's there's several more men. Right. But as a as a whole, you know, we we put together something nice. Definitely, uh, definitely, and well, and definitely, and well done, man. Um, and anything else that you would like our audience to know, of course, uh, your social media and the place where they can pick up um, honey water Moscato. Um, give uh, give us the details on on, on those things. Yeah. Where, where can people pick those up from, and where is it available? What's the easiest way to access it? Um, if at all, anything else I want people to know. Yeah. Just hold on, little girl. This is your world. Hold on, little baby. This is your day. Hold on, little boy. You're king of holy ground. Yeah. <laughs> and with that, I don't think there's anything else that I can say. This has been our day. Calvin Kosher, thank you for coming hey, through. Man. Make me one promise that you will be back. I'll be back. All right, definitely. We're going to sip some honey water Moscato. Yes, sir. We're going, we're, going to do that. we're going to do that. And I'm telling you right now, at every one of my homes, there will be one of your bottles signed by you, sir. Let's do and it. And my, my, my closest network also, they're going to have to have that. So Let's I'm already putting it out there. They know who they are and they know exactly what they got to do. Hit me up so that we can make sure that I we say. make this brother happy. All right. Until next time, as I always say, the responsibility that we have upon our shoulders is not being just dropped on our shoulders by chance. It's actually being drafted by God. It's being put on it by God because God knows that we can carry it through and pass it on unto the next generation. This brother, Calvin Kosha, Mr. Calvin Kosha, is one of those examples. So until next time, you take care of yourself and remember, if we don't do it for ourselves, no one else will. Much love.